Welcome to another session video. This is from the wonderful Sherwood Forest Farm Park Fishery. I'm here today where I'm going to be fishing three different ways. I'm going to be fishing the pellet waggler towards a very, very inviting island. Later on in the session, I'm then going to be looking at the top kit plus two line, and then I'm going to be looking down my left hand side where I've got a really long margin. The wind is blowing down into me. It looks absolutely ideal. Today is all about carp, not F1s, proper carp. So let me talk you through the approach. Now the peg that I'm fishing today is about 20 meters wide. It actually opens out onto point of an island and that's where there's a beautiful overhanging willow tree as well. And that's where I'm gonna be targeting carp on the pellet waggler. It's relatively shallow over there, but I'm gonna be pinging eight mil pellets over there. And that's how I'm gonna kick off the session. And then later on towards the second half of the session, I'm gonna be coming to a top kit plus two line where I'm gonna be fishing on the deck with pellets and corn. And then right at the end of the session, the final stage will be going down this left hand margin which is quite a long margin I'm going to be going about 10 meters down there and I'll be feeding that in the second half of the session where I'm hoping we're going to catch some proper fish Now before I delve into the tactics, the rigs and the baits that I'm going to be using today, I'm just going to give you a quick walk round of the setup. Lots of people ask about why I set up certain ways and why we might have rollers in certain positions and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to take you just for a few seconds, a quick walk round tour of the setup. Well, as you can see, we're on a bit of a road here on these pegs here. You've got the road right behind you so you can drop your kit off at your peg but as you can imagine this is not a match so there are vehicles going up and down so that is why i've kind of set my rolls up rolls up in the way that i have so there's the peg as you can see we're on platforms here 20 meters to the point of that island where that beautiful looking tree is really standard setup for me as regards the side trays okay so i've got a bike side tray here in this tub here i'm going to be pinging eight mil pellets there are or well, that can hold eight pints of pellets so i've got plenty of pellets there to hand as you can imagine when you're pinging pellets you can go through quite a few and that just means i've already got them there ready to hand and they're in a super nice safe um stay dry kind of a container as well if it starts raining in this pack here i've got some they're just some pole hook lengths um some pole gear basically bits and bobs of starts um, some pole cups and that sort of thing in there is a selection of pellet wagglers which I'll show you in a moment because we might be changing different wagglers couple of catapults when you're pinging pellets always have spare catapults ready because obviously it's quite easy they're so active you might be feeding a couple of hundred times a day you want to make sure you've got spares with you because if it was a match you wouldn't want any downtime very simple bait tray okay so i've got eight mil pellets these are just coppings you can use your own pellets at this venue so i've got um, plenty of those with me so they're eight mils i've got some corn which i'm going to be feeding down that margin and on the five meter line about there so i'm going to be feeding corn there and i'm also going to be feeding on those two same two lines four mil hard pellets okay that is it that is the bait tray really simple got the landing net to handle i've got the carp landing net set up the carp one ideal for this sort of fishing i've got the pole sock as you can imagine when you've got um, spare sections and, and it's quite windy as well today it keeps bluster being a bit quite blustery so you want to keep a pole sock there to keep make sure all your pole sections are okay i've got a nice uh, roost there for all my top kits and my rod okay now I've got one roller positioned just there that is the quad roller which I'll show you and that's positioned there so that when I'm fishing that top kit plus two line it's dead easy to swing two sections round straight onto that quad roller it's downwind as well it's also got these on which means that they can't blow off if that wind keeps gusting like it is so if I hook fish just there i can simply just move the top kit round pass two sections back onto the quad roller and that's nice and safe out of the way and it's it's um, right in into the pole sock so they can't go anywhere and it means i'm leaving this road free here from obstructions that's just my tripod which i'll move in a moment and then i've got a flatbed roller this is the larger flatbed roller on the other side of the road and that is for when i go down that long margin which is going to be 
in front of that tree there. I've got 10 meters of pole, and that just means that I can ship 10 meters straight back over that flatbed roller. I will obviously have to keep my eye out for any vehicles moving about, but that means I can ship back in one go. Hopefully land the fish without any issues, because that's priority. And then if there are any vehicles, I can just move the remainder of the pole over. Um, and that is it, that is the whole setup. Nothing complicated, but very, very comfortable. And it just means a lot of things are off my mind because I've kept this road clear. So let me talk you through the rigs and then I'll uh, talk you through the approach. Okay, so on the roost, I've got a cupping kit. Okay, that's the 150 mil pot and that's because I'm gonna be big potting that five meter line. That's just how I decided to fish that. And I'll be using this for feeding the margin line as well. I've just got it that way around on the roost. And that's just because it's easy for me to just pick that up like that, get some bait, pop the bait straight in and then ship it straight out. Okay, so I just keep it that way. Now, the first rig that I've got, I'm using the MTX1 pole today, the power pole. Fantastic bit of kit for this, super, super strong for these big fish. Um, it's only about three foot deep down this margin. Okay, so it's not a really shallow, shallow margin. Um, so as you can see, it's three foot deep. Um, the float I've got there is a 0.3 gram. It's uh, a Dino Lunchy, which I love for this sort of um, this sort of fishing. Really super durable, and it's got a really thick bristle on it, so that you can see that easily on the camera. And I'm going to be fishing with corn as well. I might put double corn on, so I need a nice point um, bristle for that for fishing those bigger baits. But like I say, it will stand out on the camera better for you. Okay, so it's only three foot deep, um, and that is it's seven pound line. Uh, I've got short hook length on there, no hair rigging or anything, I'm just going to be hooking the corn as normal. Okay, so I've got a couple of stops there, and then just one stop below it as a dropper. And that is it, and that's set about, it's about two inch over depth, I might have to change that, um, depending on the conditions. Okay, and that is coupled with the green slick elastic, which is super, super strong. Um, and that should help us land any fish that we hook in here, and that is, as you'd expect, fitted with the puller bunk okay really nice and smooth these top kits come ready supplied with these these roller bungs in there as you can see the little rollers in there it just means that when you're stripping elastic off it keeps everything really nice and smooth okay so that's the margin rig now the top kit plus two setup again as you can imagine it's, it's not too deep this lake anyway but that's probably four foot deep okay um again on the same um, same sort of top kick, this is with the orange slick, okay, so it's a little bit lighter, but that will still allow me to land any of those big carp, and when you're playing them in open water, you can afford to let them run a little bit, but the float I've got on in this depth is about four foot deep, I've gone a little bit heavier than normal, and that's because it's towing a little bit, and that's a 416 chimp, okay, wire stem, so that's really nice and um, stable, uh, with this wind and this tow that we've got, and again a nice bright bristle, well, I'm going to be fishing corn on this line as well, but obviously that's nice and bright and a thicker bristle so that you can see it on the camera. I haven't got any stops down the line until you get about a foot from the hook. And then I've got three big stops there spread out and then I've got two smaller stops as two droppers. And that's set again. This, this is about two inch over depth as well, but again, I can change that accordingly. And like I said, that's fitted with, with the uh, Matrix Dacron connectors and the orange slick so they're the pole rigs and the final setup is the one that i'm going to be starting on is the pellet waggler okay now this is the horizon caught waggler it's 11 foot lovely little rod for this it's not very deep over there but i've got that coupled with six pound horizon mainline that's just on a 3000 reel which is beautifully balanced with this little rod um, and then i've just got the um the matrix pellet attachments which are brilliant you just slide them on the line there are three below and one above and that's because obviously you can move the depth nice and easy because with pellet waggler fishing you tend to be moving the the um you know changing the depths quite often to try and stay stay in touch with the fish or find where the fish are um but there's one above the float and that is just to lock it in place and then there's three below which means that when you're casting if you're casting a heavier waggler or you're punching it out with three being on there, that obviously ensures that it grips it really, really nice and tight and doesn't slip on the cast. And these have got, got a nice swivel there so you can quickly and easily change the waggler. And I've got that set at about 18 inch to start with, but like I say, I expect to be playing around with that. So I'm just gonna keep pinging pellets. I'm gonna start just to the left of where that 
uh, willow tree is in the water just to the point of the island kick off with a pellet waggler and all the time I'm going to be priming that five meter line I'm going to big pot it I'm not going to feed the margin until the last two hours so I'm going to feed the pellet waggler build that up hopefully catch some fish come to five meters where hopefully there'll be some fish waiting and then the latter stages I'm going to be going right down this margin right down here into that wind where hopefully we're going to catch some bigger fish so what I'm going to do initially is I'm going to feed that top kit plus two line I'm going to big pot some bait in on that and then I'm going to keep firing some pellets over towards the point of the island I will openly admit that whilst I've been setting my cameras up and stuff I've been pinging four or five pellets over there every now and then so I have been building it up for ten minutes or so and I've seen one or two fish moving over there as well so I know there's one or two carp moving around out there so I'm going to feed this short line and then I'm going to ping a, a waggler out there and hopefully we might have a quick run of fish because I can see that there are one or two fish moving just as those pellets are going in the wind's a little bit tricky but I've got a few different wagglers to try so I'm sure we're going to find one that's going to present it just right so I'm just going to kick off with that's the 150 mil pot quite a few pellets in there as you can see and then I'm just going to top that off with some corn and then I'm just going to build this line up over the course of the next hour or so whilst I'm fishing the waggler the sun's even coming out now which is nice and I'm just positioned this line I've just plumbed up so that it's slightly at my right that's it big pot that in so that's up to the right so it's out of the way of any thrashing and reeling the waggler back across that line just offset it it's downwind as well and i haven't put it to my left and that's because if i am going to go down the margin and start catching down that line when i'm going to be playing fish on that line i'll be playing them through that swim if i'd position it on my left so i'll put it on my right just because it's a little bit out of the way so i'm going to kick off with a six gram waggler just got it set at about it's about 18 inches deep it's not very deep out there but just going to kick off with exactly the same pellets that i'm uh, i'm actually pinging in which are these eight mil coppins so i've just got an eight mil pellet on here on the band size 14 hook and i'll just see what that depth's like i mean i know there's one or two fish out there because we've seen them moving so it's just going to be a case of pink keep pinging pellets keep the fish interested but you obviously want to try and make sure you're going to catch them as well so I'll just follow those pellets in now see if we can snare one <laughs> well I think that worked <laughs> looks a good fish too that was literally it was almost as soon as it hit the surface it's a very slow fish this one just got the drag set on the reel I do like the back wind on as well because I like to play them on the back wind especially when they get round the net but I have you could probably hear the drag slipping or the clutch but yeah this feels a, a nice fish that took it straight away I've been feeding pellets out there for 10 minutes and that's normally what you do in a match you try and build that build that swim up so that when you went on it it wouldn't take time to get it going or give the fish confidence you'd like to think that they'd already got confidence as soon as you go on it I'm pretty sure it's all carp on here yeah it's a good fish size 14 hook like I said just that 8 mil pellet and depending on how quick we'll land this if I was playing this for a while I would ping some more pellets out there just to set up that last fish but I've got a feeling as big as this fish is I've got a feeling it's uh, it's not going to take long to land it it's just really dogged nodding away so I'm sure we can land this one pretty quickly there we go big powerful fish let's have him there we go what a fantastic start so what I'm going to do now is just before I unhook him I'll ping some more pellets out there and try and get the next fish lined up I want to feed just enough to keep the fish interested but I don't want to feed too much so that it takes me a longer to get a bite you know you're almost kind of not starving them on the hook but it's very similar to that 
I just want to make sure when I do go out there, we're going to catch straight away. And as you saw that one, you know, it was straight away that one. He's a big fish. Beautiful fish, look at him. Really nice and long. Fantastic condition. <laughs> well, what a fantastic start. First cast. Let's pop him back. I had got permission to use keep nets today because this is a, obviously a, a feature video, but I decided not to just because I'd hoped we were going to be catching fish like this. So I'll sacrifice a catch shot for making sure that these fish are going to go back straight away. There we go. Fantastic start. No need to change anything. Just put another pellet on. Feed again, try and line up the next fish. And every fish we can keep putting in the net is obviously a bonus because we're still waiting while we build up that five meter line. So I'm just gonna go again with an eight mil pellet. Just on the band, these nice big pellets going with a lovely plop when you catch pulling them in and you know, we know that that's what the fish go for. So whenever I'm fishing like this, if you, you know, if you can catch with the same pellet you're feeding, then that's perfect, you know? So let's see if we can get another one. Good thing with pellet wagglers, you can see the float so easy, especially against that dark green background. The wind is blowing, as you can see, from left to right, so that's gonna tow the float off, off line. I don't wanna start trying to flick the line under to sink it. I think this is gonna be a very, that was a fish move just past the float then. It's a very active way of fishing, and I don't wanna do that because when the pellet goes in, I want it to be as, you know, as, as, as natural as possible, just as though it's a loose fed pellet. And I'm quite willing to just keep casting every few seconds so that the uh, the wind's not going to drag the waggler offline. There we go. Well, that bolted off straight away. Nothing. Quick tug on the on the rod tip. Really exciting way of fishing. So it's took the pellet as well, amazingly. But it's good that there's some fish there. There's one or two top anglers that have always said. Lads that fish it a lot more often than I do, that they love the pellet waggler because it, it usually rewards the more active anglers and you can actually work at it. And that's what I love about it. Let's see if we can nick another one. Let's go slightly to the point of the island this time. If the fish are taking the bait as quick as that, then having a bit of bow in the line won't matter too much because I'm not leaving it out there long. You know, I see some people fishing with a pellet waggler, they cast it out, sink the line, and they just sit waiting with it kind of suspended and just wait for, well, I've seen people leave up to five minutes, you know. But today I'm just gonna be fishing it really active so that, you know, unless you catch one in the first 30 seconds, just be a case of feeding again and then casting back over the top. The bites are usually so aggressive that even if you have got a bow in the line, they tend to, you know, almost hook themselves anyway. That wind's blustery. It's uh, all over the place a little bit today, but it's all right. I'd rather be fighting the wind and getting plenty of bites than being really comfortable and everything be right and no bites. That's why we carry different wagglers and things for tackling different situations. There we go. Very, very aggressive. It's shallow water over there, and that's why when I'm hooking them, you can see all the water kind of erupt. There are fish milling all the way around there. As you can see, there's that big um, willow tree on the right hand side. It's fantastic cover for them. But I've also got open water to the left, which is obviously where fish can back off to. But the wind's coming from that direction as well, so everything is looks absolutely ideal. This one doesn't feel as big as the last one, but very welcome. Very powerful fish in the shallow water. There we go. 
another beautiful fish. You can see how they rack up the big weights on here. There was a match here yesterday. They have matches here on a on a Wednesday, open matches, and that was one with 100, 130 pounds yesterday. That was just down here to my left. For those that know the venue, I'm actually fishing peg 39. The match was one on peg 34 down there yesterday. That's a long fish. Not as big as the other one, but still got loads of energy. He doesn't want to. I'm not going to get a chance to hold you up, am I? I'm not, no. I don't want to risk uh, hurting you. There we go. He's got his fins up. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's see if there's some more waiting for us. Just keep them pellets going in, that's the main thing. Got to keep them interested. Got to keep them competing as well. Because that's how you catch the air. Uh, you can still see the odd fish moving out there as well now. Keep a few going in, just three or four at a time. On some venues you've got to contend the depth as well. So sometimes you might be fishing a venue that might be places like Larford Lakes where it could be 12 foot deep underneath that line where you're actually feeding these pellets. And what can often happen is, it, it, you know, if the fish aren't eating the pellets as they're going down or as soon as they go in the water, they're obviously building up down on the deck. So that's when you might need another setup like a bomb or a, a method feeder to cast onto the bottom later on. Um, but it's that shallow out there, it's literally only that deep. So I don't think that's an issue today. And as we've seen from the bites that we've had, they've been pretty much straight away. They're taking the pellets as soon as they go in. There we go. They're really waiting for it now. That one's gone underneath the willow tree. The willows are great to fish under sometimes because there's nothing really underneath them. It's just an overhanging tree, basically. Not like some features where you might, you have overhangs, but there are actually roots and things underneath as well. So, you know, I don't mind fishing to willows like that. They're fantastic. This one's kited to my left a bit. We'll play him in that way until he comes up nearer to us. See that drag doing its job. Just keep the rod down nice and low. It'll always help you get them in quicker. See if he's gonna come up first time. There he is. Got him. Beautiful fishing, absolutely fantastic. Got some big scales on him, this one. Let's have a look at him. Fantastic start. Let's see how many of them we can catch before we go on that short line. So, I've been priming this line, as we know. The wind's just dropped a little bit, but I haven't been on this line at all, so I must kick off with just a single grain of corn, just to get a feeling for what's there. I know there are other silver fish in here. Um, I fished here years ago, it's probably it's eight to 10 years ago, and I think I remember catching some lovely roach on the corn. Um, I'm obviously hoping they're not going to be there. I'm hoping there's some carp there. So this is going to be the first drop. I'm about two inches over depth. It's four foot deep. The wind's dropped a little bit, but I've been feeding this line for two hours now while I've been fishing that waggler line. And I haven't fed that waggler line now for probably 15 to 20 minutes. I'm not going to feed that anymore. I don't want to encourage the fish to stay out there. So let's have a drop in on this and let's see if there's something waiting for us. I've seen a few tiny little bubbles coming up, but that could be from skimmers. I, I know there are skimmers and bream in here as well. So the bottom did feel quite soft when I was plumbing up, but we'll, uh, we'll find out what it's going to be like. So I'm just going to lower that, lower that single grain of corn down. A size 14 hook on. It's seven pound breaking strain hook length. So it's a really nice strong rig. It's like I say, I mean the fit, if the fish we've been catching on the waggler or anything to go by, then you know we're expecting the uh, average stamp to be quite large. I haven't got the float dotted. Obviously, I can dot it right down if need be, but I'm fishing a, a confident bait. I'm expecting indications from fish anyway, so and I can't dot it down too much because I want to make sure it's all right for you to see on the camera. So I'm going to leave it how that is. 
I'm sure if there's any carp there, the bites will be positive enough to uh, to clearly see, and that'll just bury. But I haven't seen any signs of um, any fish close in. You know, I haven't seen any fish moving or anything like that. Um, only the only, you know the only signs of fish I've seen have been the ones across towards the island where we where we've been fishing the waggler. So the water's a lovely dark green colour. So that float stands out really well. But it's, it is really nice and coloured. It's what you'd expect this time of year. It is July, so you'd expect the waters to be coloured, especially when the fish are so active. There we go. Really slow bite. Just lifted it slightly and back in again. This feels a very slow fish. Not sure if it's going to go on a run or not. It's just kind of holding his position at the minute. It's slowly inching out to the middle of the lake. Feels a heavy fish this one. Not a really confident positive bite like I expected. It was just a very slow slow pull under. I'm not sure if he's not going to go on a run. Let's get him back to the top kit. Put the pole section safe. Good fish like we expected, really slow. I wasn't sure if he was far looked or not actually, he was coming in really doggedly. Let's get him. He's a big fish, beautiful. That's what we expected from this short line. Look at him. Beautiful fish. You know, and that's the beauty about this elastic. This elastic will catch you them. You know, you can land two pound skimmers, bream, anything like that, even big roach. But obviously when big fish like this come along, it's got enough backbone in it to land these fish as well. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to hold him up properly for you, but there we go. <laughs> what a stunning fish. Look at that. Long fish, fantastic. <laughs> Well, that was a beautiful fish to kick off with. Like I say, I've been priming it for two hours now, that line. It's uh, quite a deep part of the peg as well, so thankfully all that disturbance from catching the fish on the uh, pellet waggler has not, um, has not disturbed them too much. Let's have another drop in, see if we can snare another one. Didn't have to add any sections either to that. I mean, that was easy, a double figure fish, 10, maybe 12 pounds. Didn't have to add any sections on once I hooked it. You know, this um, this elastic and everything, this orange slick just held everything in place, which was great. Um, but like I say, I expected the um, the average size to be around, you know, that six six pound mark. Obviously, that was bigger, so we'll find out. Let's have another. Uh, See if we can uh, catch another one. I've just, well, as you saw, I topped it up just before I unhooked that fish. I topped it up with a few more pellets and um, some more corn. I'm only putting four mil pellets, hard pellets on this line and, and sweet corn, as you can see. Um, and then I'll be feeding that the same when I go down this margin line to my left, which I'm going to do shortly. I'm going to feed it before I go on it. So I'm going to feed it half an hour before I go on it. So I'm just going to fish this out. To be nice to catch another fish, and regardless of whether I do or not, I'm going to uh, feed that margin line. It's 10 metres down to my left hand side towards the other platform. I'm not right up to the other platform. But I'm going to prime it half an hour before I go on it. So uh, when I fish this out, I'm going to prime that line, give it half an hour, and then we'll have a look down that margin, see if we can catch some big fish down there. That was a much, much faster bite, that. You could have almost said that was a, a line bite. This is a much more active fish, this one. Yeah, you could have said that was a line bite, to be honest, it was that quick, but the fish is on. Much quicker, this one. Swimming much faster than the last fish. Let's see if we can get it back to the top kit pretty quickly. Don't think it's a massive fish. Put that pole section safe on there. beauty about this sort of elastic you know you can just get back to your top kit and then you're almost just playing it with 
the um, with the side puller. You know, you can just adjust the attention accordingly. Changing direction quick, this one. <laughs> it's like a barbel. I think there are only carp in here. I don't think there's any other fish like that in here. Like I say, I haven't fished here for almost, probably, I bet it's almost 10 years. Oh, he's come off that one. Like I said, I don't know if it was hooked right or not. The bite did look like a foul, a foul hooker with it being so fast, so quick. No signs of it being foul up. No scale or slime or anything on the hook. I'm gonna go in now without feeding. I don't really wanna feed it straight away, but it's not long since I've actually fed this line, but let's just see if we can get, get one. It might be better off to feed after every fish, maybe. Sometimes when you're big potting, well I said big potting, when you're potting bait in like this, it's sometimes best to just pot some in, fish it out, or catch what you can off it, and then feed again. We'll find out anyway. There we go, little indication. I was just considering whether to feed again. I was just considering it. <laughs> <laughs> and then the float buried. A quick bite, but it looked like a clean bite. Not a big fish. It'll be interesting to see what it is. Ah, we've got him. There we go. Much bigger fish than I thought it was. I thought it was only a couple of pound when we first hooked it. And he came back straight back to the top kit. And he uh, put a, up a good account of himself. Just hooked in the corner of its mouth. Firmly in as well. Got some lovely big scales on him. Still got loads of energy. Not sure if I can hold him up for you, but let's have a go. Hang on, pop. <laughs> no, he's not going to let me, I don't think. He's not going to let me, but you can see it's another good fish. Really big mouth, look at the size of that mouth on me. Let's pop him back, he's got loads of energy. And this time I am going to feed now. I'm going to prime that, prime that margin line now. I'm going to put another feed, another pot of feed in on this line. See if we can catch another fish. It'd be great if we can within the next five minutes or so. And then I'm going to have a look down this margin and see if we can catch down this side. So let's see if we can get one more on this line and then we'll have a look down this margin. Indication there and then it went. <laughs> wow. Well, it looked like a liner at first. It, there was an indication, then it lifted. Sometimes that's what you get when the thing it is, it's a bream. <laughs> He's making some disturbance. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. I think that's going to be the last fish on that line for now. Like I say, there have been bubbles coming up there, and I, I suspected they could have been skimmers or bream. What a beautiful fish, though. Fantastic, fantastic condition. They're a great nuisance fish. When you have to carp and you're coming back with two pounders all the time, then that's nice. I think that's our signal to have a look down that margin. Well, it's half an hour since I fed that line. Um, just big potted some bait in. It's about 18 inches deep there, so I'm, I've no idea if there's any fish down there. Usually in that sort of depth, you can't really tell if there's any fish there. You know, it's not like a really shallow margin line. So I don't know what to expect, but I'm gonna go down there with a single grain of corn on. That wind's got up a little bit. So I think that's gonna affect um, presentation of the float but like I say it's 18 inch deep and I, I have aired on the side of caution and put a slightly heavier float on it's 0.3 gram so hopefully that's going to be able to allow me to present it properly like I say I'm fishing about it's about 10 meters down down this margin I might have to shorten this line to be honest between um, pole tip and float it looks a little bit long now but we'll find out when I start.
fish in and get get the rig out there. These long margins always look fishy because they're so far away from you. They look ideal. I've got this set at about it's about two foot. Uh, sorry, it's about two inch on the bottom. The light isn't brilliant, I'll be absolutely honest with you. Hopefully you can see this float on the camera all right. If I put it about there, I could just about see that all right. It's against a white sky, white background, and it's a red float, so it's not ideal. Could do with a black top float on it, to be honest, but I think it'll just be about all right if I can hold it there all right. That wind's coming down, it's coming down the bank towards me. So I might have to shorten that, that line between the float and tip, but we'll find out. Hopefully they'll not be finicky if there are some fish there. No, it's not right. I'm going to have to move position, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right back. I'm going to have a quick change around with the cameras. So I'm going to switch the, cam switch the cameras over and I'm going to fish shorter. So I'm going to fish about six metres down the bank where I can see the float better. I think the bottom's clearer there. I'll set the other camera up for you. And I'm going to start that other line up before it gets too late. So I'm going to feed that line and I'll just have a quick change over with the cameras and I'll see you in a moment. Well, I've had a quick change around now with the cameras and I've come back to, I'm about six metres down the bank now. So it's much easier for me to see, to control. And once again, it seems like the bottom is pretty clean. So yes, I had fed further along the bank at 10 meters. So I've now got two spots that have been fed down this margin, but just for the sake of filming, I'm now, I'm now on a, gonna be fishing the line that, that I would have selected in a match. Had I not been filming this, if it had been a match, this is the line that I would have, or the spot that I would have fished. So I'm just gonna have a meter or so of pole under my arm as well. Maybe a bit more. Just in case I've got a good fish. So and I'm gonna be fishing just there. So I'm not gonna go really, really tight into the bank. See, it is a little bit messy just there. You know, there's one or two bits of twigs and stuff, I think. Feels a bit uneven. So I'm just gonna fish there. I only fed this 15 minutes ago. So it's not like it's had an hour or two to prime or get the swim ready as such. But hopefully the time of day is right. It is pretty quiet there. There hasn't been any disturbance for a while, so let's just hope. There we go. Oh, that was an indication straight away. Which is encouraging. That wind's just died down a little bit at the moment, but that's much better for me to present it there. And hopefully it's all right for you on the camera as well. That was an indication first drop. Again, I've just fed it exactly the same. Some four mil hard pellets. I've put one, a few eights in there as well because that's what we were catching with on, on the waggler. There we go. And it's a decent fish as well. Swimming straight out into the, oh, he realizes his hook now and he's off. Okay, this is on the green. green slick so it's you know a lot stronger than the yellow that I was using I think I'm just going to put a little bit of bait in on that I'm not too confident that there's any other fish there at the minute but just a little bit of helping there's about eight pieces of corn in there 24 mils and half a dozen eight mils you can pop them on that same spot again very encouraging start it just shows that all that time, all that time we've been fishing at 10 meters without really an indication or any, any sign of encouragement. The first drop in on a clear spot, which is the initial spot that I would have fished in a match that we've hooked to fish. Was oh, the bailiff just coming around? Say hello. Oh, it's not a drop in. Let's see if we can get one out of this margin line. Got two meters of pole under my arm. So I don't need to add sections. If we hook a good fish, just check that camera that it's on this new spot for you. It looks all right. That looks really nice there. 
let's just see if that was just a lucky fish or whether th this is a, a much better spot to be fishing. There we go. Just lifted it. Just lifted it slightly, lowered it back in. This one's steaming out into the middle of the lake. Bang in line with the pole, which is not ideal. I want to try and keep an angle on it, but that's a little bit difficult when it goes in that direction. I'm trying to turn it over this way now and get some sort of an angle. It's gone out in the most awkward direction for getting a bend on it. I think they must know. Is off. Don't know, no idea if that was uh, hook right or not. I haven't got a clue. But it felt a good fish. Let's get some more bait in. Just gonna pot a bit of bait in, not a lot. Disappointing to lose that one, to be honest. Let's get some bait in. So we've got two fish on this line now, not landed a fish. Whether they are foul hooks, I'm not feeding it quite right, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I'm going to go straight over the top of that. I'll make sure I see him to get my pole out of the way. I'm going to go straight over the top of this. Straight over the top of that feed. Well, changing the spots worked and the feedings worked, or the type of bait anyway. But I'm not sure if I'm fed it quite right. We'll see how we go this time. There we go. Get power out of the peg then. I've got to admit that that didn't seem as though it was hooked right either. It kind of went and then lifted again and, and when I picked up I didn't I didn't feel the fish till it got about six inch off the bottom which sometimes suggests that you've pulled into it into the underside of it but I guess we'll find out if that's the case I might look at you know having to feed it a slightly different way or a different bait maybe them four mils are just kind of coming off bottom and causing you know a bit of disturbance like they do, you know, when you feed um, dead red sometimes with ground bait, you can have bait wafting all over the place and it, it can obviously cause problems with foul up fish, the fish are off bottom and just, you know, going in and out of the peg for all these, this bait was wafting everywhere. So we'll see if this one's up right, hopefully. My elastic's uh, done a great job again, got it under control. Let's just see if we can get this one out. Lovely fish. Look at the colour of him. What a beautiful fish. Took some getting in, I've got to admit. Gave a really good account of himself. He sucks. Just underneath him, so I'm going to change the way I'm feeding. I'm going to start feeding 8 mil pellets now and just corn. I'm going to cut the 4 mils out. It's obvious there are some fish there coming to the feed, but maybe those pellets are flying around. So, beautiful looking fish. Get him. Stunning colours. <laughs> Fantastic margin fish. Look at the size of the mouth on that.
Well, changing that feeding has just completely transformed the peg. I cut the four mils out, just feeding eight mils, hard eight mils, and corn, and that is it. I think it's just pinning the bait down much easier when the fish come into the peg. There isn't bait wafting everywhere now, and all the bites I'm getting now are clean bites. No foul lookers or anything like that, and the fish are just steaming out of the peg, which is fantastic, you know. Um, but it just shows that, you know, I've only come back four metres from that original 10 metre line down the margin. I've only come back four metres, and it's just transformed the peg, you know. The bottom is much clearer, and that's why it's, you know, so important to, you know, make sure that when you're going to fish down the margin, that you've got to make sure it's clean, it's flat, and all that sort of thing. That's how critical it can be. But it's been a fantastic session of corn everything. If you'd like to see more videos that go more in depth about a lot of these tactics and the bait choices and that sort of thing, then you might want to check out my other channel, Patron TV. The link is just there, and that is where you can get up to 10 extra videos each month. But it's been a good session, I've enjoyed it. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the future videos this is a day ticket water i'll put all the details below in the description box for you but it's been a great session i really enjoyed it thanks for joining us and i look forward to seeing you in the next video